So if you only try to be successful, but you don't try to be a leader, then the effectiveness and the impact you have for God's kingdom isn't as big. When you're a leader, you're allowed to bring people to something new. You're taking them somewhere that they're not before. You're raising the standard on what something is. When you're just trying to get the thing done only for yourself, you only get the thing done. When you're a leader, you bring everyone with you. And so whatever calling you have, whenever you want to take people with you on your journey to God and of you seeing the fullness that God has for this season, or this region, or this city, or this team, then you will always increase the impact that you have. So don't go at it alone. Go at it with other people, challenge those around you, inspire them, encourage them, give them vision, give them hope, put uh, help, help lift them up when they're feeling bad, and then you'll always be increasing God's kingdom's tent pegs everywhere that you go. All right, but this is the one I wanted to get into. All right, so here you're going to see a couple of questions. And so I'm not going to go over all of them, but I'm going to go over a couple of them. One of them is, how can I grow as a leader? What's the really practical way for me to grow as a leader? And so there's four phases of growing as a leader. Phase one, some of us might, might be in, right? This is what it sounds like. I don't know what to, I don't know. I don't know. That's good, right? You don't know. That's the first phase of anything you lead. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what this is. I don't know what that is. I don't know. Okay, the good news is that you don't stay there. The next one is now, I know what I don't know. So now you're in the role, you're in the kitchen, you're in the dorm, you're in the DTS, you're seeing the gospel, you're looking at YWAM, you're looking at your calling, whatever. And then you're like, okay, when you first get into it, I don't know anything. The second stage of it is like, oh, okay, I see all of this stuff. Now I know what I don't know. So you don't want to just stay in, I have no idea what's going on. You want to grow out of that to at least go into the next one where it says, okay, now I don't know what I don't know. And now I know what I don't know. Okay, the third phase is I grow and I, and I know it and it starts to show. So now you're not the person walking around that doesn't know anything. Now you're the person that's walking around with a little bit of the solution. You're like, oh yeah. Uh, like for example, Aldrin's a really good example. Aldrin never did the kitchen. He never did the accounting. He never did the transportation. And he never did any of the admin on the base. Never did any of that stuff. That was like eight months ago. He was like, I don't know. Every time I talked to him, he's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's because he's in the first stage of it. That as he grew, he kept taking on responsibilities because he wanted to serve other people. So he took on the kitchen. He took on some of the accounting. He took on the transportation. He took on some of the base logistics. And he took on the DTS. And then he took on all this stuff. And then he got into a place where it's like, well, now I know what I don't know. He started growing. And then it was like, I grow and I know. And now he's really, he was, now this is like a couple of months ago. Then he started really doing the thing. It's like, where's the transport? It's already in the parking lot. Where's the water? It's already here. Where's the accounting? I already wrote it. Where's the, what's the menu? I'm writing it right now. Like now he's starting to do what he knew he has to do. And then now he's, now he's here. But we're on this level of whatever he's, he's growing into, phase four. I simply go because what I know. We need a menu. We need to know how much we're spending. We need to be able to have a car. I need to call them up. Now he's telling us we need this plan before a couple of days in advance because the driver has other stuff he's doing. Now he knows what he, now he's beyond I know more than what I don't know. Now he knows how the thing works. Now he's just doing it. That's how you grow as a leader. You, now you get to this place where you, you know how it works and you're serving in it. And you're able to grow in it and help other people in it as well. All right. Here's, now, that's like the idea of it, right? That's the, I wouldn't say theory, but that's like the phases of it. Let's go into the discipline of it. So this is part two, the traits of a leader. So this question is, how can I become disciplined? That's a really good word. Because in the beginning, it might be like our mom or our dad or our leader disciplining us. 
But as a leader, you want to discipline yourself by volunteering yourself to the teachability of the Holy Spirit. Uh, then you're like, okay, well, how do I do that? Okay, so the number one thing is, I didn't learn this until way later in the military, which was later in my life, but you can learn this now. The first one is challenge your excuses. So whenever you have an excuse, challenge it. So when you, it's like, so what are you going to do? I don't know. Why not? Well, I got to learn it. That's hard. Challenge that. Go like, I challenge you to a duel that you're too hard, right? And then you're like, okay. Then you take that challenge and you're like, I'm not going to make any excuses. I'm going to learn. When I was in a conversation about these YWAM ships, I have no idea how a ship works. And we're going to have a whole fleet here or something. And I'm all like, okay, so that's how that thing works and that thing. I'm, but I've been through this already. I'm like, okay, you know what? I have no idea what that thing means. But I've been there. I, I, that's what I've been doing my whole life. I, don't, I get into stuff I don't know anything about. And then and now I'm not making any more excuses. Before I used to be like, well, I'm brown. I'm Filipino. I ain't got no money. Like, seriously, that's how, it, that's how it'd be. And then I'd go, I can't do this. I'm not smart enough. I didn't get a degree. Someone else should do it. We need to hire somebody. Like, something like that. And then now I'm just like, all right, whatever. I don't know how to do it. I'm going to challenge whatever it takes to learn how to get this thing off the ground. I'm just going to learn it. Like, just zero excuses. Just challenge them. Anytime you don't know it, just challenge it to a duel. Take your glove off and slap it in the face. All right, the next one is remove rewards until the job is done. So for me, right, I like some chocolate. So I'm like, I'm looking at it, and then I have these things I have to do. I have to run. I have to work out. I didn't do a lot of them. Maybe I worked out a little bit. And then there's some cool um, banana bread with chocolate chips and stuff like that. And then Josh is like, oh, my gosh, there's banana bread with chocolate chips. Are you going to come to the kitchen? I'm like, get away from me. And then, so I look at it, and then I really wanted it. I was like, man, I gotta eat, I wanna eat this thing, I'm tired right now. Claudia looked at me and she said, do you want anything? And I said, I want ice cream. I said, I, like, I want a reward right now, because I'm tired, I'm looking for something to reward myself. But I'm not done. There are certain things I need to get done, they're not done. So I'm sitting there with Valuz in the office, he's working on the stuff he's working on, I'm working on the stuff I'm working on, and then I'm like, I can't reward myself until I get done. So you have to do that to yourself. Like, you know, pick a reward you're going to like. You know what I mean? Don't make it like a sin. But then if you're going to go hang out and like, I don't know, with your friends and go out and talk and just chill and relax and eat some food and stuff like that, that's a reward. That's fun. But don't do it until you get done with what you got to do. But you, as a leader, have to tell yourself that. You have to go like, okay, I'm not done. This is going to be super fun. So I'm going to finish my work with excellence so I can do the fun thing. And then you restrain yourself from the pleasure so that you could finish what you have to do. That's how you build discipline. Sport is, sport is a lot like that. Ath athletics is a lot like that. Okay, the next one is, this is another thing about leadership. Leadership is intuitive, so it's invisible. A lot of things you do in leadership, you can't measure. So there's this side of, of charisma. There's this side of vision. There's this side that, that is kind of invisible, but there's this other side of leadership where it's just not feelings. You have to get the job done. That's what leadership is. So it's like, you know, brooming or something. Let's say you're going to broom something. And then you got to broom the ceiling, which you're not doing. They already did that. But then let's say you have to do it. And then half of the ceiling isn't done yet. But you're like, oh, I feel so tired. I don't want to do this. You have to stay focused on what the result is. That a leader looks at the fruit. Even Jesus said, I judge a tree by its fruit. And so a leader, they're judged by their fruit. They're judged by the result. And so that's one thing. When we're not leaders, it doesn't matter. Because we don't have any results. We're just doing whatever we want. But when you're a leader, you have responsibility. You got to get something done, and then it shows the result. And so you have to look at it and go like, okay, what is the result that needs to get done, and then I need to do it? That's, that's how you got to stay focused with that. Okay, that's that section. All right, let's go to the next one. 
and then we're going to be able to, um, you'll be able to talk again. Okay, because we've got a couple minutes before lunch. All right, go to page two. How should I prioritize my life? And then I want you to go to the top of the next column. Okay, this is another one about taking initiative. This is what it looks like. Okay, a leader will initiate. A leader will pick up the phone and make contacts, spend time planning, anticipate problems, invest time with people, and fill the calendar with priorities. That's what a leader will do. What a follower will do is react to everything around them. Everything is reaction. What they'll do is they'll sit by the phone, they'll listen, and they'll wait for the phone to ring. And they're like, hey, it's not ringing, it's not ringing, it's been five hours. All right, I guess my job's done. A leader will pick up the phone and call somebody and make something happen. They won't wait for someone to tell them what to do. They'll take initiative and take initiation instead of react. They won't be, they won't be passive in that. Okay, the next thing a follower will do. Spend time living day to day reacting to problems. Every day it's a problem. 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 A leader will spend time planning all of the things that will blow up. All of the problems that can come out, a leader will spend time making that plan. Of like, okay, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is what we need to do, this is what we need to do, this is what's going to happen. That's what a leader does. They're, they're ahead of the game. They're ahead of the problems. Someone that's following is constantly getting slapped in the face with a problem. They're like, boom, 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 boom. And then they're just falling back and back and back. And they're never ahead of what the Lord is calling them to do. Okay, the next one is, a follower spends time with people. I'm just going to hang out and spend time. A leader, they see their time as investment. My presence is an investment in your life. When I'm around you, we're going to grow. When I'm around you, we're going to be edified. When I'm around you, we're going to be sharpened. A leader edifies the body. A follower hangs out with the body. You want to be the one that sharpens like iron. Sharpens iron like sharpens like iron. Okay, the next one is a follower fills the calendar with request. Everything is like, what are you doing on Wednesday? Nothing. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do this. And then you're like, great, Saturday. What are you going to do on uh, Monday? It's uh, um, nothing. Okay, well, why don't you come here to me with the beach? It's like, okay, great. That's what a follower does. They just, hey, what do you want to do? I'll do that. Hey, what do you want to do? I'll do that. They're never ahead in their life. What a leader does is they look at their whole life. They see the priorities that need to get done. And they put that in the calendar. They're like, no matter what, this goes in my time. And then somebody comes up to you on Thursday and says, hey, you want to go to the beach? Sorry, I'm planning for the DTS. Or it's like, hey, what are you doing on Sunday? You want to come with me to the mall? We can go mauling. I'm going to stay home and there's some notes and I want to read my book and I want to get ahead of all my assignments. That's my priority in this season. That's what a leader looks like. They prioritize their time. They don't let people rule their time. <laughs>